Hey guys, Zach here, and I just want to make a quick video. Since Salem is getting closer and closer to being released, I wanted to do a quick introduction to what the game actually is, because there's so many new players and so many people are watching my channel now. I wanted to do a What is Salem video. So, I'm not going to be talking about the mechanics in this video. I have other videos for that. If you want to know what gluttony is or how it works, then I have videos for that. Just check the playlists. But in short, Salem is a permadeath survival sandbox MMO that has brutal PvP, crafting of items, and building of structures. Now first I have to tell you, it is hard. It is not an easy game to get into. The learning curve is practically vertical. And the in-game instructions, although they are much better, they're not going to give you an accurate or super useful guide on how to survive the world of Salem. So you have to be prepared for that. It's not something you can pick up in a day or two. You have to get used to what Salem is. And I have to mention, it's time consuming. It's not a fast paced first person shooter. It is something that will take time. Although not as long as you might think, it might seem like it will take months and months, but if you do the game properly, and if you play right, and if you make some friends, you could actually get pretty far in a couple days. But it's not something you can just pick up and be ruling the world in a couple hours. Now, first warning in the game. You will probably die. But don't let that scare you. Now, this is a permadeath game. So if you die in Salem, then the, uh, you lose your character. All your leveling, all your stats, all the items on you, they're going to be gone. But what you can do is, if you already own land, you can inherit that land with your next character. So it's not that bad. But, once again, going out into the wild, people you meet there will probably try to kill you. Now, you are only safe in the home city area. So if, for example, you start in Boston, then in the Boston territories, people can't attack you. Although wild animals still can, so if you see a snake or bear, make sure you run away. But people can't kill you in the hometown territories. But as soon as you step outside of that, you are fair game and anyone can just come up to you, kill you, take all your stuff and you will lose that character. That's what it means to be permadeath and that's what gives value to what happens in the game. And it is a huge thing in terms of relationships. And speaking of relationships, in-game relationships are super important. They're useful for all kinds of things. It's very handy to have some friends around. You can team up with some people and build a base together. You could team up with a lot of people and build a town together. And just having a lot of connections to buy stuff and sell stuff and doing all of those things. And people could just help you out. Some of them are nice. So having relationships in the game can super duper help you out. Now in terms of where the game is going, once you've gotten past the whole living by yourself, wandering the wilds, leveling up your character, eating a bunch of stuff to level your stats, what is the actual end game? The end game is going to be based around the society of Salem and the economy of Salem how people are going to really interact on a large scale. There's going to be thousands of players per server, and that's going to lead to really large and smaller settlements, each with their own distinct personalities. This game comes from the developers of Haven and Hearth, and that game ended up having two major large cities which were basically warring with each other. But of course, there's the occasional hermit around and all of that. But who's going to run these towns? There's already been cases of mutinies and abandoning towns and villages being split in two and people murdering their leaders and all that kind of political intrigue. So if you really get into the game, you could be part of this awfully grim and dark world, but it's fun in a mysterious kind of way. And then one more thing I have to tell you about, the level of detail in this game is astonishing from how the purity system works and how gluttony works and all of these mechanics to just how much stuff you can actually do in the game. With every update, there's more things you can craft and more things you can build. The game is not finished yet, but if Haven and Hearth is any indication of how it's going to go, this game is gonna be massive. There's already three servers and the worlds are huge. When I say thousands of people on each server, there's space for everyone. So Salem, made by Sea Tribe, which basically means two people. 
Updates are slow because there's not a large team, but with each update the game grows exponentially. So it's pretty easy to get a beta key right now, or if you're watching this when the game actually has gone into open beta, you can probably just sign up for free. The game supports itself on the ability to buy in-game money with real-world money, but it's still not a very effective way of leveling up your character. It's just a bit of a time saver if you actually want to put some money into it. And of course there is the huge risk of losing your character after buying a bunch of silver. So if this video has managed to intrigue you, how about you go check out the rest of the game? I have a ton of videos on Salem, or you could check out my good friend Igor Vids. His channel also has some great stuff and we often work together to create Salem content. So I hope I've managed to give you a good idea on what Salem is. You probably still don't fully understand what the game's all about, but you should definitely give it a try. My name's been Zach, I'll see you in the next video.